you know what one plant you could have is a pothos plant. That's one of those plants that like have leaves. You you can forget to water it and put water in it. It'll be fine. And it's uh. one of those hanging plants. So like it could be viney. You can have it like go all over the place. Maybe. I don't know. I do want to get some plants in here. I don't know if I want to take care of any. So I, don't I know haven't I had, do I have haven't had any plants forever. And now all of a sudden I have two prayer plants or coleothea or coleothea plants uh a coleus plant some other plant that i don't know what it's called and two hanging plants so i have like seven eight plants and honestly like it brings a lot of life it does feel really nice it does yeah it does feel there's really like nice a to the difference seeing what it's like to have it's like scientifically proven that can like do it, better work it says it cleans right. the air and all that yeah. stuff i mean i'm not entirely sure like if i've noticed a difference or anything i'll have to you know you're convincing me i might have to get it you'll have to come over and actually just like take a dip because it's been so long since you've actually been over i just have like so th- dude this room is but like you, you don't the brim. but at least you don't have the ceiling like i mean sure you have some stuff like right there but like you can have one like right here. Ma- oh, I mean, it's a little bit away from the windows, but I mean, you can just put one right there, right smack dab, right there in the middle, like just like a hanging plant. Yeah. And just once it grows, it's vines. You could just have it kind of trail out somewhere. Fuck. And then what happens when I move? Do I cut them off or? Yeah. Th- when you I- If you cut all these things, you promote its growth. Like oh. owning plants, I've actually learned quite a bit more about really? like plants. I'm like learning to identify plants. I've and never how to take care of plants. There's a whole aspect that you just like. More I'm sure it's a whole with. like YouTube space. I'm sure there's oh, like yeah. hella YouTubers. Well, that's how I started. Is I saw this YouTube video of someone showcasing their house, and they had like over 250 plants, but it looks like a jungle. But when you're in the when you're looking at the video and it's showing you inside the house, you're like, wow, this looks like. Man, I could see myself reading a book or just like <laughs> not doing anything really and just being really like relaxed. I'm, I'm sure it helps you disconnect mentally from like the digital. I'm pretty sure I mean, there's um, a lot of maintenance though, I guess, with the going that crazy. Dude, 250 plants. Fuck. At that point, I mean, like they're a YouTuber though. Some of them are others so are like, just like hustling, dude. some of them are just like plant people. Probably they own like a nursery or something like that. Yeah. But um, I did go through a rabbit hole for a while looking at plant stuff, and after a while, my YouTube algorithm was all messed up. It was just showing me more oh, than I dude. was intrigued with. Yeah. But uh, I mean, it is nice when you start having plants. And you're like, oh, it, it feels it feels a lot different to have like just a couple of spaces filled up that you know that you're not going to fill in like. Not that I would go to this route yet, but there's some people who just put like a bar across their whole like, not like where they would have a curtain straped up across their window, but a little bit farther where they would have like a line of hanging plants like set up there and they'll just drape over. Uh And uh, there's a lot of different types of plants that look a lot different that, you know, totally change the vibe of the house depending on what, you know, imagine if you just had a bunch of succulents like, okay, you got it like a desert feeling. Or if you got a bunch of tropical plants, like, oh, this has a different setting. Like, you could change the setting of the house with with plants pretty easily. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you could do that with, like, furniture for sure and all that. But, like, when you have a setting of plants, especially if it's just, like, just, like, a picture setting of it, it definitely changed what kind of tone the room has. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's got some cool Instagram vibes, too, to it. Yeah, I mean, also with some plants, you'll eventually be like, I need to have a grow light here or something like that. And when you find, like, a certain type of grow light, it does have, like, an ambiance. You know, I have LEDs, uh, you know, across, like, the ceiling of my yeah, house. The strips? Yeah, I've had that for a while. You've uh-huh. seen that yeah, before. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I still use them, but there are times I just use the grow lights. I'll just have those on. And it's just too, like, they kind of have almost a natural setting, kind of like this, but, of course, obviously way more dimmed down. Yeah. But they're just, they're, you know, UV grow lights. And there's the one on the bookshelf that's kind of mixed with a red and yellow. So it kind of has like an amberish like hue to it. And, and it has like its nice own settings. That there'll be times I just won't even use the, the LED lights, which is nice. 
But yeah, I, I gotta get some plants. Like the I plants, wish I had a lawn. The two plants that you can really start off with for someone who does not have a clue of how to handle plants is snake plants. Those are those plants that are just like they look like giant blades of grass. There's like uh-huh. a pot of like four or five. They're probably like, like green with yellow onto them. Okay. You know what's funny is there's a lot of plants that I didn't like, but until you start getting into plants and you start putting them in certain areas, you're like, okay, maybe I just didn't know where this would be appropriate to see or you know what i mean like okay. a, um but definitely a pothos plant you'll learn what that is once pothos. you yeah it's it's those hanging plants that are just leaves viney leaves um there's like just your golden pothos which is just a normal kind of a neon pothos which is like a really bright lime green like if it's like during the morning and the sun shining on it it's like so bright it kind of hurts to look at like that's how like interesting it looks like uh-huh. another one that has like kind of silver markings on it is a marble queen or silver pothos which i want to get that one i want to get because i have two golden pothos which are kind of like your default and then I want to get like the marble queen and a neon, put like the, probably the neon in like the bathroom or something like that. And the marble queen, like on the far end of, of my house on the, on the West side of the window. A lot. I have a lot of my plants on the East side because the morning is a lot of sun, but it's soft. Yeah. And you know, the evening sun is kind of harsh. So like the way how I have the plant set on the fireplace is actually like a nice design that, by coincidence, actually works out for the plants that I have. Like, if I had on the other one, I think it'd be too harsh. At you least should, for the plants that I have now. You should post more about this on Instagram. I'll I'll post some more pictures. I'll I'll post a picture of it once I have them more full. Like, I'm having one of these plants. Like, their vines is so long that I almost have its first pin set in for okay. it to start growing. But I haven't done it quite yet. Because I'm still getting used to, like, figuring out what's the right areas to prune first. Because plants do like to get cut. If you cut a plant, it'll grow even more full, like, what's still around. How do you know what to cut? Or do you just cut it? I, I, I'm, I'm not one to say, like, I know exactly yet. That's why I'm a little hesitant. But a lot of people, they'll just, like, start snipping away at certain areas. It's just, like, below each node, which is, like, where... If you full, see a strand of, of this plant, there's, like, leaves coming out, like, you know, in alternating uh-huh. patterns. Those are called nodes. And you just cut a little bit below one of those. And what you do, whatever's still there will just grow more full, more bigger. So you can, like, promote growth if you... Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. What's funny is moving into the house that me and Andrew are in now, right? Yeah. There was a plant outside. Mind you, this is way before I took interest in plants it's been there this whole time and i barely started to notice that like you know it's not doing so good because it kind of blend been neglected so i started like as i'm taking care of my plants started taking care of this plant and it got to the point where because i snipped a few of its stuff out like of its older leaves Uh and new leaves have been growing in and all that and now it's really big like uh, you've seen it it's in the front yard Uh uh it has the holes in it yeah. Yeah, it's like if I put it's it like on this table, leaves. yeah, if I put it on this table, it would take over this ta- this whole table. Yeah. Uh I just saw like in the in either like Lowe's or even at like Nugget in their little flower area, they'll have like a little pot of this like this big with three or four of those things for 30 bucks. And so this thing's like a big ass plant. I think if like if you wanted to sell, it can go for a hundred or two hundred dollars, which is like a huge like selling, bro. Make some money. That or just propagate it and make more of them and then sell those. But I mean, that you would have to buy some equipment for, you know, it, it, to make money. You got to spend money, and I have to buy a bunch of you stuff. Should engineer it to grow fruit. Just have like get it to grow, fucking radishes. So what's funny is speaking of like out of the box weird shit, those potho plants that I was telling you about. Uh huh. So like those plants are supposed to flower, but they haven't even flowered, not even in the wild, for like over forty or sixty years. 
like you have to physically give it a certain like hormone or something to force it to mature. Like it's something like it can't mature enough. Why? I, I don't know. You'd have to look into more of the history of it or something, but like no one has seen this thing flower in almost a lifetime. If you were to get that thing to flower, I imagine that'd be pretty crazy. But you'd have to like inject it with something. Like they said, it's like it's impossible to get it to flower. And they're like sold all over the world. Do plants flower? Wait, I don't even know what flower. Now I'm like, like make flower, like you know, make it, you know, like you know, roses. They make a petal flower. Okay, can you make plants that don't typically produce a flower produce a flower? Maybe if you crossbred it, but no. What I'm saying is, this plant is, is supposed dude, to. Dude, what is a flower? I think that's just like a a, a a reproductive. I think it's just like a reproductive part of the plant. It opens up. That's where the nectar and pollen is. I want to say that's sexual organs. That's just naughty bits. We should pixelate those. <laughs> I don't know, dude. There's a lot of shit I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Dude, plants, bro. Fucking. I still won't get one, though. I don't think I can get one. I'd kill it. I'd kill it. I forget to water it. I'd be like, oh, fuck. At least it's not as bad as, like, a, a goldfish, dog. goldfish or a dog or something like that. I mean, so, all right. I've bought out of starting this whole thing. I've had bought in, let's see, let's see what I have. Eight or nine plants, addicted, right? Addicted, dude. I You're got, addicted. Well, n- I mean, I've got a few, but like, it's not like I'm getting any more lately. I mean, if I find something interesting, yeah, but like. do you, Are you going to keep up with this for the rest of your life? I mean, I I'm just gonna keep up for if all the plants die, then that's an obvious sign. <laughs> but so this all started in June. Uh-huh. And the plants that I first got were the pothos and a and a plant that has three of them in pothos. there. Pothos. And one of them is a pothos. But like I've had those since June and they're still doing strong. In fact, one of them is growing so far to the point that I can it can almost touch my head and it's hanging from the ceiling. So it would definitely dangle into your face, and it w- and it wasn't that low when I first got it. So like it's been doing good. That yeah, plant's yeah. actually been doing really good. Oh. But um, out of like the eight to nine plants I did get, two of them did die. One of them I was like, that's just the learning curve, I guess. Yeah. The other one I was like, damn, I actually like this plant. Not that I was like, ah, or whatever. How did like when do you consider it gone beyond like gone? So when all of, all everything wilted away. Like I'm pretty sure it probably died earlier or something. I think what it was is I probably overwatered these two plants. Uh huh. But um, I, I'm I, I'm just gonna learn. Were they really expensive? Good. Every plant that I've gotten so far has been either like fourteen bucks. I okay, think the, that's not bad at all. The most like the hanging plants are like twenty bucks. I think was the most. Uh huh. Okay. That's not bad. I'm trying to think what's the most expensive one. I, Have you looked up some expensive plants? So like when I buy when I buy, I buy like two of them at a time, and it's like twenty five bucks. Okay. That's what I've I, and I've only done that like how many plants I've already said like so I've already done that I've only like done two or three shopping sprees for yeah. these plants really, and like there's people who do this. In that probably, for yeah. the span of ten years, yeah. and that's why they have like these jungles inside. Yeah. Uh, now the plants that I do want to get are like somewhere around eighty to ninety dollars because of the standing ones. I want to put them by the by the fireplace to be like, you know, towards the bottom to fill up that area. But it's mm-hmm. not like I, it's not like I'm that enthusiastic that I'm doing it right away. Yeah. I just been, I don't know. Are you? Do you have to like re like pot them eventually? There are or? some plants that you need to repot. Others oh, that really? you need. To, others you need to just wait until later. So what's great about the pothos? Like honestly, if you have, if you want to try your hand at any plants at all, it would be that one because that one actually, 
likes being root bound. So in oh. other words, you really don't even need to change the pot. And if you ever did, you would only go one size higher. And you wouldn't really do that much work with it. You'd only water it like anywhere between once every one week to one and a half weeks. Oh, really? So you just water it once a week? Yeah. You Basically, so well, from what I've learned with a lot of plants that I have have is if you don't know how to water a plant or whatever, just stick your finger into it by about like your knuckle or second knuckle deep. And if it's dry, then it's time to water. But if you feel like, oh, it's a little moist, you stick your finger out and it's like there's, you know, still like soil kind of sticking to your finger that you could tell kind of has like you know wetness to it then uh-huh. maybe do, then it doesn't really need to be watered quite yet but if you're sticking it in it's not like it's not soil it's like dirt yeah then it's time to water and that's usually like and they say those both those plants they like to dry out before they get watered again so really like, okay yeah so like they're just like the best plant for someone to that was the first plant for me and you've known me for for a while when did i ever was like one for plants yeah yeah and that's just a plant I'm waiting over the course of it. I got it in June. I'm waiting to see by the next year. Maybe I'll have it like, you know. Just circle around. around yeah. The yeah okay. those, those are those plants that if you do take care of enough, learn to fertilize. Like that's where it's more moderate. Like, you know, just get the plant first. See if you like it. But like if you start fertilizing it and encouraging its growth, maybe you can get it to grow, you know, a lot All farther around. and stuff like, okay. you know, stuff like that. Maybe. Yeah. It's been nice. It's that cool. Would, that would go nice. Honestly, bringing some greenery into the into the house, like oh, it, yeah. it does change your mood for sure. I mm-hmm. that's scientifically true as well. Yeah, and it's kind of subtle, and, and you, yeah. but you do feel like ah. I need to because I spend too much time in here sometimes, and sometimes it drives me. Especially, bananas. yeah. Look at you have a lot of fucking mechanical high sh- tech, yeah, you know, high tech everywhere. Stuff. Just ha- you just. Just have like a standing plant somewhere, a hanging plant somewhere. I'm sure all of this technology vibrates at a frequency that like disturbs me. Gotta be. I mean, I I know for a lot of people who are just like all day standing in front of or staring in front of a screen, it is kind of monotonous after a while. It like is, yeah. it'd be nice to just have a little just you know when you see a picture of a demo house or whatever, there's just that little plant. There's like for the aesthetic touch. <laughs> I want to get some. Like you, you, are, you can easily learn to condense that a lot better and have like some other plant. Like because you, you know, you can put some just grow LED lights that could be for some modest plants that don't need that much sunlight. Oh, I don't want to get into like plants. I might get the one that I might get some hanging plants. It'll, I'm not saying it'll be a full on addiction, but you'll probably get one and like it and be like, you know what? Maybe I should get, like it'll start up. Would it start off with me as I put one hanging plant? I was like, that's nice. Maybe I should have a potted plant on a shelf next to complete the look on another place. That's how it that's probably going to get addicted. I don't that's s- addiction I don't right s- there. I don't see myself going that far as to like having, I would what, what honestly, those, those small- no joke. I wish I had a rainforest like house, Yeah, but that's going to take, cause I'm not going to spend every, I'm not going to spend every week finding a plant. Cause also you got to like f- go to places. Cause I went, I've already, you know, all these places I got where I like at Lowe's uh-huh. and I was surprised, honestly, like out of all the places I went to, I'm surprised that Lowe's had all these like cool plants. It's not like they're changing it up every week. So I've already found my, like, choice selection there. So, like, now I have to go else somewhere. And, like, there's only two plants left that I could really see. They're two sugar cane, like, you know, just standing plants that I'd have by the fireplace to complete that little area. And that'd be it from what I can find locally. Then I'd have to reach out. And that will be, like. So what are you doing for Christmas? Are you going to put a real tree in there? You you know you just I had my disrespect a tree and just cut it no roots throw it down and then throw it out in front of all your other plants <laughs> light it on fire that's just yeah. you the know poor what's funny Christmas is these tree people, gets disrespected these, these um 
YouTube videos that I were when I was like learning how because like I was watching this first just when I was like how to take care of a certain plant but like you know when you find a YouTuber artist that's like you know showing a lot of information you'll go through their history and stuff mm-hmm. and I did see like some of their Christmas ones is their own plants just wrapped up in lights yeah like they okay. use as that like okay um obviously to, you know it's not like the the but it's a cool interesting little difference looking at it and whatnot but yeah. um. I think there's like a lot of the other plants that I have in mind. Like when you would put it in a corner that kind of towers off that has big bushy leaves, like or not bushy, like big flaring like leaves. Those are like a hundred, hundred and fifty bucks and stuff like that. So it's not like stuff that I'm like trying to get. I got all the ones that are just in the area that I think are nice and stuff like that. Uh-huh. I think like honestly, out of all the plants around Three or four plants I could see at least, not in this room here, but for you to have that, the just that nice little touch. Two here and two in the living room. Okay. Okay. Like you would have just a little, tiny little, maybe succulent in here. Is it so? Would it be weird? Because I do have some fake plants in the living room. Is it weird to have both fake and real plants? What's funny is those people. To me, I think it's odd, but that's just me. Uh-huh. I'm I'm my own fucking asshole. Yeah. But like. Yeah. What's funny is those YouTubers who are have 250 plus plants, they're like, because obviously there is some areas you just can't have a, a plant because there's not enough sunlight. Yeah. They have a fake plant there. Oh, uh, okay. So, you know, it's, it's to each own and stuff like that. Um, The thing is, is, like, I've seen it and it's nice. It's a nice look. Not that it's like, uh, it's just, I don't know what it is. It's just the real plant, it has a nice, like, I don't know. It changes the atmosphere. It's texture. The lighting, the reflection of light off of a real plant is different than a fake plant. I guess. I I, I suppose. In when you, when you see a fake plant, like, you still appreciate it. You're like, oh, that's a nice look to yeah. it there. But, like, if it was a real plant, you'd admire it more, I guess. I think it's because we're biased. Um, that's, yeah. That's it's alive. Yeah, it's lit. We don't have we oh, have damn, we have a pre- we have a prejudice against things that don't damn, have. Damn, you're taking care of that thing. Damn, you're taking care of it. Wow, you're a good person. That's better than plus if buying. You, plus, I guess if you did throw away the fake plant, it's just gonna go in the garbage. While it's a real plant, it'll just tear go away. back into the earth. Yeah, just it's recyclable. Back. Yeah, the two plants I fucked up. It's not like I, they're not in a landfill. They're they're just in the backyard, <laughs> one with the earth. Yeah, man. but yeah, it's. I mean, yeah, I should get a plant. Get one. <laughs> I want to grow some weed. I think that'd be a plant to take care of. You know what's funny is I, when I had my bookshelf, I was thinking of what plant to put in there, and I was thinking to. To get, I, I, you, you have to see. I don't know what's the name of the plant I have now, but it's nice. Has different colors. But I was thinking of getting a weed plant just mm-hmm. to put right there, and not even pick it or anything. Just let it do its own thing. Just leave it alone, whatnot. Because uh, that would be a nice little. Yeah, I would always like to cultivate my own marijuana. Just it'd be nice to have a plant that has fun. a smell. It's, just it changes the smell as well, well. Not only that, but like you take care of it. And then you, like, cultivate it. And I think that whole process is very, like, interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Just, I, you know, I used to like growing it when I worked on a farm. And it was, like, you kind of get an emotional attachment to it. Because, like, yeah, when you grow, just when you grow something. I mean, those plants that I had, right, I killed them between, like, the first two or three weeks of having them. So it wasn't like I was like, oh, or whatever, but I was like, like 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 you lost at a video game it's not like you were happy about it but i wasn't like distraught yeah to it but i know like if i had the first plant that i had the pothos that i was telling you about uh-huh. that's like re- doing really well in dangling if just all of a sudden some blight hit it and it that died i would pretty i would be pretty upset really that like I wouldn't be crying about it, but I would be like fuck man i I really like that plant the second plant though that I did have died i was like you know i i I was like unhappy that that one died because that one was like a centerpiece Uh because i i guess i just didn't know how to raise that one right 
I got it again. I found a new plant. That one's doing well now. It just wasn't as good looking as the original one, but hopefully I, I'll learn from my mistakes and that one will do better. But like, it's on. It's when you have something that you're taking care of and you're using it every day. It's just like a video game, like yeah. something that you're just putting time into when you when it fucking goes to shit. It's like fuck. Yeah. Like that was all for naught. And you accidentally delete it. Yeah. Or when a new game system comes out and it's like, well, that was irrelevant. That's what I, dude. I guess I should put more time into plants than than video games. You know what's funny is, uh, I I don't feel like it was a related thing, but I've stopped playing video games as much and started watching more stuff like videos and TV. Uh huh. I've been watching a lot more movies like on. HBO. What I like about HBO is they still have a lot of movies from back then. Like a lot of 80s and 90s. They have older stuff as well, but uh-huh. like I feel like the best movies were from the late 90s, early 2000s. I think those were like the best movies around. Movies today are good, but I think right now the best thing that's happening media-wise are TV shows. I don't think TV shows have ever been anywhere as remotely on par today or you know or back then they haven't been anywhere remotely on par as what they are doing today what are you judging that on what like like just the the time like look at netflix exclusive shows Uh look at amazon exclusive shows like they have productions that are like on par with movies that are yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. back then shows are just shows yeah yeah you know garbage budget and working with what they got. I mean, there's even some shows that today that have a garbage budget that are working pretty well. Like CSI is in like Law and Order. Like those were like the highest budget shows. Anything that had to deal with like firefighters or mm-hmm. doctors and whatnot. But like now they're like doing a wide variety of fantasy, comic book. Yeah mystery stuff a lot of more limited series stuff but uh so i'd say today for sure shows are doing better than ever uh-huh. but for movies i think back then we're like i wouldn't i don't know if i would say those movies are better but like every movie that comes out this year you're like all right Whatever, but like back in the 80s and 90s, I think all those movies that were coming out were just like blockbuster hits that people still watched it. Like, what kind of movie you think came out within recent years? You're like, these people are going to be watching it for the next 20, 30 years. Avengers? Avengers for sure. That's definitely for sure. Like that, would you say that that changed just how movie like... I think it changed how we view... Like, geek culture, definitely. D- definitely. That modernized geek culture. Yeah, a lot. And I feel like that is also, like, hand-in-hand hand with, like, the rise of anime in the United States. Well, I feel recently. like anime has always been around, maybe just not. Yeah, but it's mainstream now. Like, what what has been mainstreamed uh, anime lately? Well, okay, so what I consider, the reason why I consider it mainstream now is because back then when we were kids, there was a certain group of people that watched anime. Now, all groups or of I people guess, are you just saying that anime. anime is just part of geek culture? Yeah. Yeah, I would yeah it's, like, it's like right next to each other. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I would agree with that. Yeah, but like, even, you know... I mean, it's like really huge in hip in the hip hop community, mm-hmm. and you know, it's really so is, big. Yeah, so is geek culture. And yeah, culture. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, I, just, I think just and that because, was back then. And like even you know, all types of all cultures watch anime now. It's not just like a couple of them. Mm-hmm. So I think yeah, and I think that can also be due to a generational thing, like. Yeah, it's had time to grow. How many boomers are also it just looks anime? beautiful, dude. Some of the animation on shit that's coming out right now, especially if you're into like action, 
So like that's that's a decisive statement actually. There's a lot of people who argue that anime back then looks better than anime today because a lot of times now today animes are learning to cut corners and and kind of blend a computer animation with 2D aesthetics. Uh huh. So it's really like a 3D model moving that has 2D appearance rather than hand drawn. Like a lot of people would say that the 90s was the golden age of anime. Yeah, definitely. A lot of the, you know, cr- most detailed, most amazing shots were, like, around that time. Mm-hmm. And, like, I'd say there's some truth to it. I, 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 I couldn't say to utmost because I feel like that 3D animation shit, anything with new technology, you just need to give it time to refine itself. And if someone with enough skill, they, you know, they'll be able to figure out how to make it work. Yeah. Um, but I don't know, like the thing with movies, you can get 3d CG so good, but there's something about seeing a movie that uses special effects, like real special effects. That's different. Like I've seen a lot of the, the digital, like gunshot wounds, the blood sprays. Before it looked like shit. Now it's starting to look better, but I don't think it's still nowhere compared to squibs. When someone gets shot, you could just tell there's a pocket of something underneath that's like, yeah. Like that to me is still, I think that looks cooler. Yeah. I think that, like, if that's not in any practical movies anymore. Practical effects and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I think practical effects are kind of just put, put more on the wayside. And I don't think like, I'm not trying to say like, oh, we should cut out CG entirely. Well, sometimes but pra- like, practical effects use CGI, you know, partial practical effects, partial CGI. Well, yeah, I I think the they best help. I think the best is to have a blend of the two. But like, for a big budget movie, to have something like just digital blood sprays instead of like you know actual squibs, like like I feel like that's like wasted CGI. Like why? Why do that when you could just, you know, throw something underneath and they'll just. Because it's cheaper. It's cheaper to do it in post. I mean, sometimes it's, it's sometimes, but that means you just have more animation animators to animate, spend time on that smudge, well, doing all like, that stuff when you could just have just a prop that goes a, off. You got to have someone who maintains the prop and then there's the cost of getting the prop. There's I feel like it's just easier to pay someone to just like take the time to like. Just do well, a good enough when you think job. about it. There's usually just one, maybe two or three, effects people. Because what if they need a pyrotechnic, and then an f- FX person? When it comes to CG, there's a there's an ocean of employees. You yeah. sat and watched Avengers, stunt, right? And after you see the doubles. cast of the people and the stunt doubles, then you see the animators, and it's just this big ass well, fucking declaration of just. Dude, an names. army, just names. Yeah, there's so many people that work on movies. We should watch. We should. We should take <sighs> a little uh, experiment and watch a couple of movies that were made before the like Jurassic Park. Okay, uh-huh. the first Jurassic Park did have CG, but it was only like four or six minutes throughout the entire movie of yeah. CG. Yeah. Let's see the animators cast, and it's just gonna be this little. Yeah, but with Avengers, it's just gonna be this ten minute waiting period of just watching just countless names there are go thousands up thousands of people that work on movies and and movies come out a lot but uh yeah and then we'll just see some other older movies and see how many fx people were on it and i think it's not as many people and yeah it's true the the Almost. actual stuff itself might cost money especially like uh pyrotechnics explosions what about, what about like credits that. credits from like movies back in the 70s how, how big do you think Star Wars is? I mean, S- Star Wars, that's that, that topic <laughs> is its own story that people can talk on for hour, date, years <laughs> on end. <laughs> there are YouTube channels that are dedicated to talking yeah, about it, dude. Entire careers dude, dedicated to careers 
people who dedicated their entire lives to analyzing a movie that was made about what 40 years ago Dude, and just the series that followed after yeah just everything that just follows suit and then just justifying the low points of it justifying and criticizing <laughs> justifying their criticizing justifying their defense still accepting shit even though dude it's uh, it must dude it must be rough being a star wars fan it must be rough you're being constantly part of the star wars cast like imagine you're like made see, this when you're thing when that, you're when you're a marvel fan you're just you know they took care of niche, that shit. You could be a niche Marvel guy. Like, oh, yeah, I like this character. I like this character. Yeah. But, like, with Star Wars, it's like... It's I feel like whole... you, you, you just like everything about it. There's no person who's like, well, oh, I like whole... Star Wars, but I only like, like, this one little bit of it. It's like, a whole, like, opera, though. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it's a whole space opera. So, you know, there's going to be a bunch of stories in one it's never going to really be about one person. But and the, if it is, it's like one of the side stories. Yeah. And I mean, like, don't want to get too much into Star Wars, but like, the problem is that someone has mentioned it's like, it's not like you could really do much more with Star Wars without reusing. Like, imagine a new Star Wars that doesn't use the star fighting, that doesn't use the force or the lights. It well, has to have all those. It has to have the force. Yeah, but I feel like there's there's the a time. lot of ways that they can make it way more creative. And I feel like they. But they just keep dude, doing there's this. So, but like there's so much back lore that is not explained in the movies that you'd be pretty imp- like, dude, there's some stuff that I've read and it's. There's a lot of shit that we don't know about the force that isn't taught to us in the movies. That's only taught to us like in like the the novels and the comic books. And well, the I heard that Disney is shit. releasing like seven new Star Wars related yeah. shows and stuff. I think so it's more than that, but yeah. They have opened the floodgates for sure. Yeah, I, I can't wait to check out all of them. I kind of don't have a Disney Plus account. Me neither. Right now. I was going to get it back probably in a, actually in a couple of months because Mandalorian. I watched three. the first season and that was really, really good. Yeah. It was really See, good. it was really good. That was the one Star Wars thing that Bill I was like, Burr, wow, I really dude, like Bill Burr, dude, Bill Burr, Bill Burr in the second season. I hope I'm not giving away too much. He comes back in the second season. Yeah, I heard he's uh, the same and thing. And he's, he's pretty good. He's pretty good. Um, I like that. That was like one of my favorite episodes of second season too. Like I only would want to get it just to watch that and like the Loki show. Like I really think uh, the one thing that I'm actually gonna read, I'm gonna get back again is probably Shutter. Like Shutter's kind of underrated. Sh- what's Shutter? Shutter is like you know just like a Netflix, Amazon, whatever. Okay. One of the plethora of streaming services that's replacing cable, but uh, it's mostly. It's mostly horror stuff, and at first I was like, I'm not really much of a horror that. thing. Yeah, but once you get in it, there's also cheesy ass movies and like B movies in there as well. So uh, like, it, and there's like a lot of smut. It, yeah, I mean, I don't know about no, not smut, but like you know, just there's just a lot of like you know, Sharknado. I mean, sci-fi films, stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, but um, there's there's also like a lot of exclusives on there that that are actually pretty cool, like. It's crazy how like cable is changed before we're like so cable weird. is going to be. I'm surprised, honestly, that cable is still around. I, I bet you give it like 30, 40 more years. Oh, yeah. Once all of our parents kind of pass on and it's up and it's just us, you know, that's left. I'm pretty sure cable is going to be like. It's like the people who use AOL today. Like Dude, they're, they're gonna be gonna, still here, but one every hundred or every thousand. It's not gonna survive, and I don't know why they don't just like make. I don't know why Comcast didn't see Netflix and was like, "This will definitely kill us. Why don't we make our own?" And then Comcast online, Comcast streaming or something like like, and then they have, and now they're so fucking far behind. They don't got nothing. You know, there's still like a, a couple, like a million, almost probably two million plus Netflix users that still use the melon option. Really? And I heard well, it's mostly have, just because like they probably have, have a bad internet connection, so they'll just get their movies mailed. Well, I think you, I don't know. I could be wrong, but they have like a bigger selection of movies. That's what I thought as well. Yeah. And I tried Googling it and I didn't get a confirmation of that. And I was oh, like, really? dude, I... Cause that's what I thought as well. Cause I was like, I think there's only like a dollar more to the subscription or something or something like that. I was like, I'll just do that just to 
get yeah. some movies that I couldn't get. I'll I'll do the whole mail in thing. That'd be interesting. But I, I didn't get any like solid like solid answer on that one, so I didn't go with it. Oh. Besides, like I think I'm gonna do like a moment where I'm gonna stop my all of my subscriptions for like a couple of months. I need to do that. I need to do that. I think it'd be wise to to do that once in a while, like. You know, there's like no nut November. Yeah, it should be like a no, no subscription stream. September. No, like, no, just no no, no sub, sub summer. September. No sub summer. No just sub do it for summer, like a, couple, a quarter of a year. Just yeah, just, That's, that would be for the dedicated. You know, start off a little a little small for to get people into, it, and then you can graduate. But like, I think at least for a month. But I mean, like everything. Cancel your Netflix. Your I can't, Amazon. Can't, you know what? I can't do. I can't cancel YouTube. I couldn't cancel it. I need to listen to YouTube with no ads. That's, I mean, I've had it without, I mean, I've had Same it with ads with for this whole time and it's never bugged me. Oh, dude, once you get it, once you get off the ads well, on Angie YouTube, has, dude, she has it dumb, on red. Bro. And what's funny is she, there'll be times where an ad will come on and I'm about to skip and she's like, wait, I wanted to see what that was. I'm like, why? <laughs> you have red for what reason? I just like I can't do. It. Sometimes they'll come up on the TV, and I get honestly out of all the furious, subscriptions, out of dude. all the subscriptions, that's the one I think is the least. I would people get. say that, dude. Okay, when people like bring up a YouTube video on their phone, I have and then, someone who has YouTube Red, and I look at it, and I and have the, access to it. I'm like, this is still meh. no. Like, okay, so they'll pull up a YouTube video, and then they're about to show me, and then an ad comes up, and I know it only lasts for five seconds, but I get fucking enraged i am furious i get so upset when so upset someone shows me something that much money dude no like that so you get that mad that you have to grab that much money out of your pocket and be like stop it well like oh there's other perks too like you can listen to it with the phone shut off which is something that i do That's a lot the at one work thing that i do see but i'm like i'm not gonna spend that much money for it i'll just that, i'll just fuck them for doing that though that's yeah. kind of fucked but i'll just well yeah. i mean like i'll just have my phone just rest off so i mean i don't really use my phone that much to worry about it to have it that well okay so i don't have unlimited data and so when you go on youtube you have to and you don't have youtube red you have to watch the video you can't click off your phone so it drains so much data so if you purchase you know the youtube red then you can shut your phone off and then you save a load of data which is the main reason why I do it. And I watch a lot of YouTube videos. Like a lot like I listen to a lot of audiobooks on YouTube. I listen to a lot of like meditation music, uh like, you know, lo fi music all the time. And so mm. it just makes it a heck of a lot easier to do everything. So that's why I can't I can't really get off of YouTube. I'm I'm on YouTube's like my number one app. I use YouTube more than anything else too. Anything, that, is, that yeah. is my most used thing. Even, I still won't get it. Even if I have Netflix, I won't. I like don't use YouTube. All right, I'll I'll always like, you know, my default is YouTube. Yeah, when I when if you look at my smart TV or if I turn on my because my startup uh, page on when I open my internet browser is the about new tab section like right off the bat, so it's just like all my all my favorite stuff and just multiple tabs just uh -huh. like up for me to just click immediately. Yeah. And the first one for both my smart TV or for my internet selection is YouTube. Yeah. It's the one I use the most for sure. Yeah. I mean, it just has everything. It has, yeah. How to and stuff. How to, how to bullshit videos. Bu the yeah. Inter interesting every, videos. Every genre. Educational videos. Old classic stuff to new stuff. Like there's a lot of classic television on there. Like I, dude, I got bit by the fucking Dateline bug you know for like a good solid couple of months i learn more stuff on there than i do on curiosity stream and i actually like curiosity stream but i, I still yeah learn more off of youtube hopefully it's right information i mean you know you always yeah. have to take that stuff with a grain of salt you can't just like absorb that knowledge with just the certainty that this is fact yeah <laughs> I need to get a curiosity stream. Have you ever gotten what was it? Skillshare? Have you ever gotten that no, one? I no, I didn't. You have, it? you have master's class, don't you? 
I used to have master class. Oh. Dude, I don't I don't really think it's 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 that worth it. Some of the classes are, prices and I was like, damn. It's a little overpriced, but of course it's because the classes are like who's hosting it. Yeah, but I just kind of feel like I it doesn't feel I watched the Santana one and I watched the Tom Morello one, you know, mm-hmm. the guitarist mm-hmm. ones. Mm-hmm. And to me, I felt like it wasn't educational. It was more like like nerding out about a specific subject. Mm-hmm. I just kind of felt like getting he, an exclusive he was talking interview about, slash lesson like, from someone you would want to hear from. Yeah, like it was just like, that, hey, Going dude, over m- information that you've already heard if you already gotten to a certain level or something. Well, like he's like, all right, this is what's on my pedal board. This is what, like you connect these two and it makes this noise. But like if you're looking for something like this, you want to look for this type of stuff, you know? And like the way he was going about it and everything and how like it's more of, it's more of like a mental, like, you know, this is what... Y- this is what you should think mentally when you when you when you play music or when you're looking for new sounds or when you're like, you know, getting rid of writer's block or, you know, anything like that. Mm-hmm. But it's a little overpriced. The Penn and Teller one though is amazing. The Penn and Teller Masterclass oh, is yeah. fucking it's so good. That's I watched the whole entire master class. I think it's like two and a half hours. I watched it all in one day. And then I started to buy like shit online for magic. Uh. And I started to buy like I know how to do cups and balls and shit. I know like I practice. Dude, I was like bringing like aluminum balls to work. And I was practicing my sleight of hand at work on my lunch break. Like underneath the table, I would just be like practicing like palming and everything and like sometimes i would walk around with shit in my hands and i would try to make it look like you didn't think that i had anything in my hands Mm -hmm. and then like like that dude that's why i love magic is because you're you're so you're in it like the magic mental the magic trick has already started and you don't even know you're in a magic trick Mm -hmm. because a magician is just prepared. If I like walked up to you and was like, Oh, what's up, man? Hey, what's this? Like before I even greeted you, the magic trick started and you didn't even know. So that like, by the time I reveal that there's a magic trick being played on you, you're processing that rather than the preparation that I could have possibly did before then. And so that's why it catches people off guard. And that's why I, I really liked how they taught that, like, in uh, Penn and Teller. Mm-hmm. Was just, like, you know, magic is a, it's a very preparatory thing. And, like, you know, it, it's kind of like a lifestyle where, like, you're just always Oh, yeah, if you, wanted, if you want to be able to know? get to the point where you're, like, impressing, like, crowds of people, like, you got to spend so much time getting your sleight of hand, like, mastered. I mean, I, isn't it? I don't Isn't want it to become a master at anything is you have to spend at least 10,000 hours of active. That's practice. what that's what they say. Yeah. I don't want to compare the two, but like I would say like the ideas are pretty similar when you compare to like someone who just like conceal carries a gun. You know, when you conceal carry a gun, you're not the type of guy that like, oh, like you know you don't you don't do that shit like you know you know how to work your shit just like a magician a magician knows how to like walk up to you and just pull a pen out of nowhere you know and like you know i i really like the the they also talked about the conversation aspect of it and how to keep people's like attention and like directed you know, at something while they have yeah. their their self Focus on something else. Also, like, you know, if I was, if I, if I have you walked and I start doing something, you know, eye to eye and I start doing something, you're not going to pay attention as much to what I'm doing as much as my eyes. But when I look at my own fist and you're looking at me, you're going to look at my fist and so now I have your attention right here. So you think that this is where the magic trick is. But little do you know, like once I m- make it disappear, you know, in your head, 
then it's like, oh, snap, where is it? And then it's been here the whole time. But we thought it was in here because I did something to make you think it's in here. And now we're looking at it. And then I tell you it's not in there anymore. That's so fucking, it's so, dude, I nerd out on magic. Magic's really only just like something that's really big in like Vegas, huh? Where Where is magic really like showcased at? Big cities. Is it uh, just in a lot cities. of big cities all over the place? Magic, I feel like it's not magic's that big a very, of an attraction as it was back then. So magic's uh, like a very, you know, what is considered magic? Is sleight of hand magic? If so, then like the people just like throwing the cups and balls and stuff and mixing them around and making you pick and making you I mean, bet. They can also be like consul- street street stuff too as well but i mean like an, a show like magic show mm-hmm. a, a performance like i feel like that's not as big as it was before like go back 30 it, 40 years was and big. that was a pretty big thing go back 60 70 years that was the it fucking was, biggest thing around yeah but like now where would you say like all right now we're magic it, it, so i feel like it's like vegas well okay so here's the thing magic is going through a resurgence right now and you just don't really realize it because it's not the way that you think that it would or that that it that magic it always coming has back and not how you remember <laughs> but like tiktok magic tiktok magic and like short form content like facebook social media magic walking up to random people and saying like hey can i do a magic trick for you yeah sure all right look at this and then just and they get a genuine reaction and it's content and all they do is just walk up and do a magic trick and they don't even tell like the audience too how it's done so you're watching them pull this magic trick on multiple people so they're breaking the rule first off of doing the same magic trick over and over and over and over again but they keep doing it in front of different people and getting a new reaction so it's really hard for them to follow so but like yeah magic is getting really big on like social media and stuff i mean it's not like people are going ape shit about it but nobody's forgot about magic everyone knows what magic is right right but I don't think it, it like I don't think there's like sh- like you know those people aren't hosting shows or stuff like that. I mean I don't know maybe they can have a career later on. I think I think it's gonna get no one's doing some crazy ass like shooting themselves out of a cannon into a wall and disappear and show up in in the cannon that they were just shot out of. <laughs> like uh no I don't think it'll. I mean, as far as I know, I don't think it'll get like that. That's not like to me, though, that's not like really that cool. I really like the the performance aspect of doing like a bunch of like sleight of hand and like clever tricks and not necessarily like big, big events like even Penn and Teller like. They'll do a big magic trick, but they have small magic tricks I, throughout the big magic trick. I imagine to it's keep a double it going. edged sword to get a big show because then you have a lot of people look observing your work and to be a magician is like you gotta show something off that people can't figure out. And, yeah. I, and the bigger you get, the well, I don't know. I mean Houdini got huge as fuck. Well, okay, so there's this magic trick that Penn and Teller did. And it's so fucking simple and stupid, and the whole crowd, even me, fell for it. Be- so they, so they said, everyone, pull out your phone and hold up your phone. We're gonna go around and we're gonna look for a good phone, okay? And everyone's like, oh, I hope, I hope my phone's good, you know? Little do do they know is they're gonna take your phone, they're gonna do some shit with it, but they're gonna try to look for a phone that looks exactly like the phone that they have. So they look around, oh, rose gold iPhone eight, boom, found it. So they take that, start the video, and then they start filming the magic trick on the phone. And they start doing this thing and then and then uh teller like grabs the grabs the phone and he grabs this thing and he's like, I'm going to put this necklace on this, on this cardboard cutout. And he goes to put the necklace on the cardboard cutout. And that's when he ditches the phone. And that's when they grab the phony phone, the phony phone, or they, they don't have a phony phone actually. And so what happens is they, they, well, they do have a phony phone, but but like they, I don't know. The phony, phony phone. (laughs) 
It's a phony phone. <laughs> I didn't even, I didn't even catch myself saying that. But um, you're saying about the phony phone. But no, what happens was at the end of the magic trick, the phone, funny if it was a the funny, phone phony is phone. in a fish. The phone is in a fish, and they got a funny phony fish. <laughs> it's a funny the, the well the phony phone is not in the fish. The real phone's in the fish. But anyway, the, the, they they had so I don't know where I was going with that magic trick. But like, dude, so it's the just funny, like the phony there's phone. There's just like is some shit. There's some shit that like magicians do that are so simple that you don't realize until like you know in hindsight. And so that's that's the the magic behind magic is that it's, it's so magic. simple sometimes. Yeah, but I don't know. Magic's dope. Magic's fucking. Magic's fucking dope, dude. And you're just stupid because you don't understand magic. Magic is, is for smart people only. Magic is for smart people only. For magic sure. was the it was what Rick and Morty w- is to people today is what magic was <laughs> to people back then. Only <laughs> smart people can appreciate it because it was too highbrow. It was too too culturally uh, advanced for people to really comprehend. What about bar tricks though? I think bar tricks could be seen as magic so too. So back then in the Wild West, bartenders who did bar tricks like flair bartending were like the fucking stand-up comedians or like whatever that town. They were the fucking main attraction back then because yeah. back in the Old West there's like, where do you go for entertainment other the than a bar. brothel to like have sex with some fucking but then where, what it's you a bar. And then what 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 shows there? There's a dude. <laughs> you know, so that that guy, and that's pretty cool. But like the other thing that made everyone also flock to the fucking scene was that dude pouring while he's fucking flipping. What can shit. I get you? Yeah. Can I get you can I get you some of this? Can I get you some of that? We got some better. Play the one where I'm tossing the gin, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> Play some ragtime on the piano. So like I mean that was it's weird how entertainment Dude, it must have sucked to live back then though. Yeah. That must have sucked to live back then. It'd be hot. Just going, you're sweaty as fuck. I feel like bro. any other time, it's even though we're in global warming and it's hot, it's just because we're pampered and we have AC. Even though this is probably the hottest, <laughs> we're probably li- we go through hundred degree weather every summer, and they back then would be like, "This hasn't happened in like fifty years or some shit <laughs> like that." Like they're topping like eighty, ninety degrees, like on like just an average day. Like, to them, a hot day is, like, 100 when we're, like, 100, 110 on just, like, a hot week. But, um, I mean, imagine, like, living in ancient Greek times where, like, it's civilized. There's a town, but you're still, like, a thousand years in the past. So, like, there's no, there's no Wi-Fi. There's no lights. There's candle lit. There's they fires. Got, they have plumbing. Yeah, they do have plumbing. There is plumbing. Sure, it may not like flush like. <laughs> there's probably some, you know. In some places, though, it, Dude, yeah, there was plumbing, shady, but there was communal. Bro. There was communal bathrooms. So imagine you just walk. You know how like communal bathtubs. Yeah. You had a shower and like this fucking. Just imagine shitting that, in the same room where you go to share a big ass mass stall in the, in a stadium with a bunch of dudes like that thing with a bucket, except it's like a dude, row so weird. of toilets. Imagine sharing the bath with a bunch of people. How sanitary mm. is that? Mm. <laughs> oh, it's so so gross. Just think of the smells you have to smell. Oh. <clears throat> Imagine how gross everybody looked back then. I don't know. I'm pretty sure they still showered and bathed. A lot of the places also probably was like a creek or river, so it could be like running. I mean, there was communal areas as well, but I don't, I don't, I don't know how like the hygiene was i'm pretty sure their hygiene wasn't on par but i'm not i i'm not sure if it like if you traveled there and someone walked by you would you be like oh you smell like a bum what do you think we'd be doing right now instead of podcasting what do you think we'd be doing 
a thousand, two thousand each. Surviving. Surviving. I mean, we are surviving if now, we were, but like think, we would be like trying think, to capture think, food, build something. Do you think? Do you think we'd be like hitting up Socrates though? You think oh, we gotta join his monastery? I don't know. We would, have to learn from him. Would would we be open minded up for new ideas, or would we be like a lot of people and shun it and be like, ah, right, let's kill him for corrupting let's the youth. Let's kill him, dude. Let's kill him. He's imagine telling too many little boys and little girls how imagine, to do these things. Dude, imagine thinking that. Ima- imagine being like, dude, we need to kill him. And then like we go ahead and kill him, and we're like, yes, we got rid of that problem. And then you find out 2,000 years later we still study the shit out of that guy. And you're like, fuck, dude. Why? Like... You don't think to yourself like may- maybe I was fucking wrong, bro. But how are you gonna be maybe able to do? That? How are you gonna be able wrong, to observe that? Dog. Why would you kill Socrates? I wish we can go back and kill everybody else but Socrates. Fuck the government, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Just dude. Back then, <sighs> you're gonna just be. T- Tilling your fucking farmland or working for some person, you'd you'd be have to be intellectually inclined to be starting to think about that stuff because you're too busy just trying to fucking like so, living yeah. for the next paycheck would you be such I- an arbitrary <laughs> term that those people don't, they're just living for the next harvest to give them enough food to just stay alive. Or it's just like yo, dude, I'm just trying to make some fucking bread, bro. <laughs> Yeah. What do you think they had dreams though? Do you think that they're like, you know, one day yeah. I'm going to be Everyone had dreams. Cavemen you think had so? dreams. I they think, had dreams that they I had a cave so... that didn't have no predators that came out. You know, there's people who had dreams but that they didn't have But do you think that like live. anybody dreamed about like, oh, I I wish I was a Are you saying <laughs> only modern people have aspirations? Well, of course, other people back in the day have aspirations, but nowadays people have aspirations to be famous and to be rich and stuff. I yeah, want to be emperors, to be rulers, yeah, to be politicians, yeah. I guess that's part of the seven deadly sins. That's been around forever. You are you saying that there's just a time? I mean. Probably when we were barely developing into humans, when there was that, it was just. Ugh. Food, <laughs> shelter. I mean, shelter's already an advanced. Well, I just like I don't think that like I don't know. People were like really like I fucking like when they're hustling. Just living in tribes. I don't think people were hustling back then. Who knows? This could be fucking offensive to Romans. <laughs> Well, no, there was businessmen in Rome. Of course, yeah. there are. There always you are be. being I'm offensive just, to some ancient Roman I'm right just, now. Just, I'm just saying, there's some peasant. There's a who lot of people that work. Who was like, I wish I could sell silk. I okay, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, who obviously. <laughs> 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 You think there's just people shoveling shit like I this I like shoveling shit. This is my life. I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't around back then. Let's I always see. have the idea that like people in Roman times were just all fucking stupid. <laughs> just I don't know why I think that people nowadays were just incredibly smarter than people back then. I think then. I think we today I feel like are are <laughs> honestly I don't think intelligence has changed at all. The only thing that has changed is our ability to retain that knowledge and share it. We're just able to share our knowledge a lot easier. But I imagine if you plucked some Roman guy and some modern guy, right? The Roman person has to be at some point educated in his, you know, right? You can't just pick some peasant like, Oh, I can't read or something, you know, whatever. <laughs> oh, I can't read. I don't know why he has a Cockney accent. My son. <laughs> but, like, if you had them just do speed math trials. <laughs> Times you, tables? Yeah. I think the modern guy would. You really think kick, so? Yeah. Be, two times two, four. Three times three, nine. Like, I, yeah. I, you don't think they used math at all? I don't think Romans. I don't think Romans can be. I think we use 
I think calculators it, and machines more. I think, like, I think they're year. more access to that knowledge. We're more access to knowledge that they just didn't have. So the knowledge that they, we share, they probably were able to refine it a lot quicker. I wish we could just go back in time and kidnap a fucking Like, Roman okay, dude. engineering all those Roman buildings had to take some form of geometry and algebra. There's no way they just, like, threw it up. Threw it up. <laughs> Just, Yo, throw up some geometry. Just throw it out there. Geometry. It's not even geometry. Geom- the, sta- the stadium G-Y-O. is just like a circle. Just, you know? Just <laughs> pulls up a compass, hella quick. <laughs> just a quick circle. Just banging there, just them out. It like that. <laughs> there we go. That's what we're building. I mean, they had to have some form. I mean, look at all those buildings that they built dude i bet you redneck culture was out of this fucking world back then i bet you they had rednecks back then redneck culture probably was the pristine culture back then to be like a a high-end masonry person that's some blue collared shit like that has to be some type of hick doing that dude wasn't like michelangelo building or building painting all that stuff in the cathedral or whatever yeah. at like age 24 or 25. I think it was young as fuck. Yeah. Something a little like young. And like, yeah. I, I mean, it's not like you lived that old anyways back then. Not only that, so. you have to build a scaffolding. And yeah. then you have to lay So you down. lay on it so you could actually draw it. And that like, dude, some of those places, oh, I forget one building. I was just in a building like not too long ago and I walked in and the roof, the ceiling was painted but it was really high up there. It was really high up there. Yeah. I was like at least 30 feet, mm-hmm. 40 feet. Like it was, I was like, fuck, dude. Like that's a fall. So you have to build something. <sighs> fuck, dude. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I feel like a fuck. I feel, you like, up, dude. I feel like falling is like the one. Either, no, catching on fire, I guess, gets everyone to scream. But like, falling is the one way to hear everyone just go. Ah! <laughs> ah! Do you, that or just everyone why, would just have this like? Why do we always talk about dying? <laughs> Every podcast we talk about. We're just waiting for it. I guess. <laughs> I'm ready to fucking go. Ah! <laughs> I, I find dude, I odd, bet like, you I'd scream like a bitch, dude. I bet you I'd, I bet you'd be oh, like, oh, <laughs> that, would be, oh, oh. <laughs> that would be the last, like, and watch it be in front of my family. Go, kids, go. I, I'm going to, ah. <laughs> honey, keep the kids. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> You get caught up in between a, tra- a train and the platform. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, save yourself. I remember, I <laughs> just. <laughs> just and just cry. <laughs> just cry. And then it doesn't kill you all the way. Just enough for you to fucking cry. <laughs> I don't want to die. <laughs> Dude, I would hate to say I don't want to die when I'm about to die. <laughs> that would be the worst. Oh, I'm not ready. <laughs> no, like this. No, 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 please. please. <laughs> I think the best way to die is to scream out. To anyone, even if they don't know you, <laughs> remember me. <laughs> Just stare right into there. Remember me. <laughs> That's oh, one I want to make that like my, oh la- my, lo- I, my dude, last words. I would, I would hate to be murdered. <laughs> Just my, and even if you're getting murdered, just say that. Pers- <laughs> remember me. <laughs> Just like someone's about, just someone's about to blow me and back. <laughs> and I just go, no, 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 no. <laughs> As the my favorite line from one of my favorite MCs, eighty shots to the mouth and the brain shout my name, Warclaw. <laughs>
God, dude, that would suck ass, bro. Dude, that could, could happen. It could happen. Dude, it's so fucking possible. I think about it too. I hope I. How much of a bitch am I? You know, <laughs> how much? When do I just shut the fuck down? Because let's face it, there's no way I can outbeat a Navy SEAL. There's no way that I could keep I could keep secrets like a Navy SEAL. There's absolutely no way. So at what point am I just gonna get fuck it? Am I just gonna be like, my mom, her location, her address? <laughs> There's gotta be a breaking point, and I say there isn't. I say there isn't. But bro, I don't know a lot. <laughs> Don't know shit. Mm. Who knows? Mm. Who knows? Bro, someone could just oh, oh! <laughs> just, 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 just. they're under the baseboards. <laughs> just, Damn. just blow up the baseboards, bro. <laughs> you know, I pretend like I'm hard as fuck. And yet, like, I complain over the dumbest shit. Just the dumbest shit. I think that's just Americans in general. You know. Oh. Like, I'm like. The internet stopped working again. Like. (laughs) My day has been really rough today. Fuck. (laughs) Like, (laughs) why isn't my phone fucking working? This download is going to take 45 minutes. Dude, are you serious? What's ha- oh, dude, this happened to me the other day. So I I, I was bouncing a vid- uh, the podcast, my last, last week's podcast, the one I did by myself. I bounced it, but I accidentally muted. Uh, like I, I have the camera audio and then I have the podcast audio. I muted the podcast audio. And had the camera audio playing. So it had the wrong audio. So I had to rebalance it. And I was like, dude, are you... I was like, I was like, bro, are you fucking serious? God damn. I need an assistant. <laughs> like, I was just like, I need an assistant. I need someone to do this shit for me. Mm, I can't mm, keep doing mm. this by myself. I just like, I don't know what I'm going to do. You dude, too much. I'm going to quit, bro. I'm going to <laughs> all I had to do was just rebounce it and it would take two hours. But I was just like, bro, I can't fucking do this no more. I'm quitting. Oh, I wish I had your wires equipped like that. Thank you. I should do that. I, I think they have something like that for the, for the plants that are vining out. Okay. Like speaking of. Earlier. All right. These are pretty cool. Yeah. I like those. I have like I have like a bunch of them. I've been doing a lot of retouch ups with my place. I, I I've been liking that. I I want to do more like design inter- interior yeah. design spruce yeah. up in place. I've been doing that also with my backyard as well. I'm trying to get that. Going. I want to do it to the studio, but the problem with it is that I also need it to be like my workspace. I need all of my like tools. I need all of my my DJ gear, my you, outdoor gear. You can gear. have your tools and whatnot. You just have them so. Spread out for just almost just aesthetic reasons. You can condense. You can honestly condense all that into one shelf. I definitely can. But here's so I'm working on this. Um, (laughs) it sucks because the camera can't see or people listening can't see. So the closet. I'm. I'm. Let's just say I'm looking to sell some stuff. I'm looking to put some stuff up. So. Uh, once I lighten the load, I can kind of condense everything a little bit more so I can do a little bit more in here. Cause, uh, you could definitely condense, you can add a shelf and have more stuff on there. See, I was thinking about hanging up the guitars. So I used to have my guitars hanging up above my desk and I liked that because all I had to do was stand up when I'm recording music. All I had to do was stand up, grab a guitar and then sit back down and plug in. But I have a raising desk now, so I don't think that that is practical because i think my desk it comes up what if you learn to get well, I don't so know. imagine having this type of right not this exact same type uh-huh. of stand right like boom arm or yeah but yeah like, 
you would just get something similar as such, get some railing systems on the ceiling, and you could have these lights just like a dentist. I would love, I would like love to have would. something like that. That's I think that super so, fucking cool as shit. That would be so space it's efficient. So, yeah, it would, would declutter the ground. And you would be able to manage these even easier. The, I think you should look into the issue a, with that though is that first off, they're kind of stuck. So like this isn't. So we're we're facing this way. This isn't my YouTube setup. My YouTube setup is totally different. What? So I need something that is. I need to be moving stuff around constantly. Cause like, so for my YouTube setup, my lighting for people that are interested too. This is I. I've worked a lot, really hard on my lighting. So I'll have two offset lights, and then I have an up light, and then I have this light that gives me a color on my face, and then I have. Um, you know, I have this backlight right here that I change colors and then sometimes I'll do the desk the same color as the as the color light. But I don't think it really has a much of a an effect. But um, <clears throat> the lighting constantly needs to change in this room for like the podcasts and stuff. So it's really hard. I mean, like I would love to be in a studio where like we had a podcast set. The whole set is dedicated for the podcast. Mm -hmm. So no matter what, your light is always going to be up there facing this. The light's going to be doing this. The board is right here. You got your area and everything like that. I would mm -hmm. like to have that and have it be like, like I would like to turn the, the podcast into like the Oprah show, mm -hmm. like the view where you got, you know, you got your desk, you got your, your, your fucking whole set. chairs. Yeah. You got the whole set. I think that's, I think, Sets like that are pretty fucking dope. Um, so, yeah. But until then, I got to use, you know, this small this small space, 16 by 12, you know, which is, you know, about the size of, like, almost two parking, slot, parking lot spaces, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah. Just about, if you rearrange it a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that phone. <laughs> what did you just start hearing? <laughs> oh my god! Fuck! This oh. podcast would get hella more views. <laughs> <laughs> Recording that, I would upload it immediately. Man, traveling I would back up home would suck, <laughs> dude. What if, bro? Sometimes I just I'd be sitting outside at night. And then think, like, what if someone just turned the lights on and back off again? And then all you heard was, <laughs> just fucking, oh my God. I feel like the Ooh. only way how, like, a, a nation to slash global thing that's going to happen would be, like, a, a huge ass solar flare hits us and the energy, all the power goes off with for the next, like, X amount of weeks all over the world dude like, that that's the only thing i could see that's like wild 80 percent of all f funds is digital now so like if 80 percent of all the funds records just went i don't i don't i don't know i don't think i mean there's paper there's paper what if china did that them. shit to us what if they're like they sent it right, we hacked in we hacked into everything yeah, but like if we it's solar flare, it that's like everyone, all, all everyone's on the same boat. Yeah, like everyone's just fucking. Everyone's on their own problem to deal with. That would be fucking wild. I don't think I could fucking. Would we have running water still? All that stuff's I think used through, unless it's a unless it's a well reservoir system, which I think woodland might run off of if I'm not mis but a lot of those places yeah they use energy like power to man those stations so like yeah it will even attack a lot of infrastructure as well like that shit would be it would seriously throw us back so far so fast dude that would be so fucked Like, we would be back to trying to farm to stay alive. And I think the fact that, like, cities, so many people so close together, like, it just wouldn't really work out. Dude, it would be a war. I would 
wouldn't even if I was a cop, I wouldn't even come to work. I'd be like, "Fuck y'all, y'all are on your own, dude." I'm calling in. I'm protecting my community. I'm protecting my family. Fuck y'all. That's how that's how it be on some occasions. There be times where pandemonium gets so crazy that people have to you know that people abandon abandon shit where you just see like you know like that World War Z movie that cop came out out of nowhere but he's just grabbing medicine for you oh, know, yeah. whatever reason. Yeah. Speaking of pandemonium, guess what a pandemonium is? Huh. Guess what a group a, pa- a pandemonium is a group of what? Panda. It's a group of parrots. Interesting. Pandemonium of parrots. Pandemonium of parrots. Almost makes me want to get another parrot, but fuck that. Dude, fuck parrots, bro. Fuck parrots. They're the they're the worst fucking thing to have if, you're, if you do not like responsibility. They're like they're the worst pet to have for responsibility. Really? Fuck yeah. Any dog, any cat is easy mode compared to a parrot. Really? Oh yeah. I mean, you've seen what I've had to deal with 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 mine, Dude, which is a rescue. By the throw way, throw that parrot in a blender and mulch that shit. <sighs> it's more f- like feathers than anything else. It's just <sighs> God, dude. You know, just a parrot it, hates me. Parrot hates everyone. But if you give it time and attention, you'll eventually win it over. But like, doesn't like Angie either. Oh, really? And that's basically its sister. Like. They've known each other for 21 plus years. That bird is about 21 years old. Damn. And has known Angie all its life. Fuck that bird, dude. That need, that bird needs to die. That bird will most likely outlive you. Really? They live about anywhere between 50 to 70 years. Wow. And that thing's only 21 years old. So, I mean, it has a... a so, you're going to keep it forever? I don't know. You're going to keep it for the rest of your life? I don't know. If I knew if I if I knew someone who could actually take better care of it, because if you leave it at a bird shelter, because people say, "Oh, why don't you just take it to a bird shelter?" That's honestly the same equivalent as taking a dog to the pound. Like, sure, you're giving it to someone who's dedicating their shift to it, but like, in hindsight, it is is a pound an ideal space you want to just dump a dog at? Yeah, that's the same with a bird, Shit. and it sucks that those things are more intelligent. So like you just know that thing's gonna be more like uh, it's gonna be more like oh why am I here you know it's more self reflective and stuff like that. Fuck. But if dude. I came across someone who I could obviously tell would take more care of it and wants it, fuck here you go have it. Really. I mean like if you want companionship and responsibility does not bug you, then a parrot is a pretty good animal to have. Really? Because responsibility, like, they are one of the most demanding animals ever. Ever. Feeding them. I don't want to fuck with no parrots. No. No, you don't. You, You seriously don't. There's some people who would go crazy hearing this, but it's pretty fucking true. Like, some parrots are more needy than some children. Like, they just need so much attention. They need attention on, like, to be fed, when mm-hmm. to be fed, be put in certain areas if if only certain areas provide certain types of entertainment. Uh, and they need, like, emotional, like, you know, they're pack animals. They, they, they fly together in packs and whatnot. Yeah. Like, they're part of a, a group, so, like, they need that emotional bond with another creature and all that stuff. Like, they need Then why does Then why does she got to be such a bitch, though? That's just what happens when, Man, it, when it's a rescue. Parrot. When it's a rescue animal, it's, like, why rescue dogs so aggressive? I don't know. Because uh-huh. they're mad at the world, I they guess. Because they're, like... Cause they're pissed off. They're like those know? kids that are just like, leave me alone. Pretty much. You don't understand me. <laughs> You're not my real dad. Dude, that bird loves me though. Now, like it treats, it treats me like dad or I don't know. They say birds also, you can accidentally get them sexually 
attracted to you. The sexually fuck? frustrate them. So when you pet a parrot, you really should only be petting this area. Okay. Not the wings, not its back, not its tail, not like a dog. You shouldn't be like, oh, parrot, parrot, parrot. Like, <laughs> who's a good parrot? <laughs> Grabbing its wing. Like, cool, cool, parrot, cool. parrot. <laughs> the most a parrot really <sighs> only enjoys is it'll bow its head down and you're just brushing its headline. Mm-hmm. Anything else is is actually Arousing. sexual advancement. So you're molesting a bird at that point if you're trying to touch a bird like a dog. When you're petting a bird like a dog, touching its back and its feathers like that, you're like, mm-hmm. I like these feathers. I like these feathers, little birdie. So like that's why make you tweet. That's like why if you did pet a random bird and it just fucking bit you and freaked out, it's like you know a bird standing up to itself. Like, Ew, stop! <laughs> like, <laughs> I do not consent. Yeah, so that's why you don't pet a bird like that. I didn't birds, know that. birds are on such a different. Get some freaky with some. They're bird. they're on such a different dimensions on care. Like with a dog, you can find the most like you know, needy advanced care dog. That's like, Oh, this is for advanced pet owners and be like, this is fucking jack shit to this bird. Yeah. But like I was saying there, if you're like, you want companionship, a parrot's a pretty good pet. If you're like really lonely and you want someone that you can kind of like, sure. You can't like, Oh, how's the weather today? Oh, it's pretty good. How about you, bruh? Or, you know, it's, <laughs> it's just gonna it's just gonna <laughs> mimic some type of form of like. What's funny is the, you know, the parrot that I have, it actually has really good comedic timing. And I'm not saying like <laughs> it does jokes. It knows when a joke is being made and it will laugh. There's been pl- there's plenty of times that we're in conversation and I'll say like what I think what it is is she understands that I use analogies and metaphors as uh-huh. jokes a lot like you know like what is this a fucking like you know every time I I'll say something like that the bird will start to laugh uh-huh. and I think it's because she realized that it Angie recognizes will, your speech patterns yeah Angie will, he'll she'll will realize that I will be like what the fuck is this something 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 and Angie will laugh usually right afterwards. So the bird has pretty good, but there'll be times I'll say something that, that does have a comedic value to it, but there's no particular timing that's the same or something. Uh And the bird will, will, (laughs) she just knows when to laugh. And you've been around where I'll say something and it'll make, you know, a group of people laugh or something. The bird, if the bird didn't laugh right then and then. It will laugh after hearing a group of people laugh because it realized like, oh, it missed out on a joke, uh-huh. and so it'll laugh. Like it's weird that it had. So like, it it's not like, sure you can talk to it on a whatever, but you can like have something at least like, yeah, get the gist of a conversation mm-hmm. or 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 whatnot. Plus, they are emotionally very needy. You've seen dogs that like come up to you, put their their snout under your hand and ask to be petted and whatnot if you well, <clears throat> especially since my bird is flightless it can't fly so mm-hmm. if you pick it up and you have it on you it's just going to consistently ask to be pet like you have to just stop and just ignore it because it'll, it will just ask forever if you gave in to that you know submissive if you just submit to that behavior but they're super super needy like on emotional level super needy what's sad is they're a really good pet for someone who, like, I don't know, your kids left or you you lost a loved one. But the problem is they live so fucking long that, like, someone has to take care of it once you're gone. Yeah. Because they, they will mostly, if you buy a bird at the later end of your life or just the It's going to have another half, owner. Just, just at our, look at us. We're barely only just, you know. A third of the way through for the the national average or whatnot. And already, like, if we were to get a baby now, there's a high, high chance that thing will outlive you. Yeah. 
Like, if anything, I think, like, getting just, like, a, an adult bird is just the way to go. Like, I, I know, like, with when it comes to dogs, you want a puppy because you want to imprint it. You want it to, to, to have your personality bleed onto it. Mm-hmm. But, like, with parrots, I feel like, sure, that I, I, I guess probably because this one that I have is a rescue is why I probably have that more of a feeling. Because, like, honestly, I would have never had a bird if it wasn't for the fact that you got pinned down with one. Yeah, because Angie's dad wanted to move to the Philippines. And he was like, I don't know what to do with this bird. And he gave it to Angie. And the bird just happened to like me more than anyone else. Bird doesn't like her. But the bird fucking loves me. And so now I just now I just take care of it. Damn. Just like you take care Jesus of those plants. Shit, just like I take care of those plants. Does the bird like the plants? The bird like chilling they, on the plants? I, I, you know, of course, there's some research somewhere saying like, oh, Get some plants for your bird's cage. Not in the, but you know, put some plants around your bird's cage to give it a more natural feeling. Mm-hmm. Blah, 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 blah. So, I, I mean, I guess it would, I, I think plants just would help every animal, everything that's around because yeah. it's part of an ecosystem. Yeah. You know I mean, what I mean? I mean, like, if it helps you just because of the way it looks, I'm sure it'll help. I, I think there's more to it because I know, you know, in nature, right? There's one with the eco, how everything kind of is interwoven with whatever. There's mm-hmm. always like, there's like plant life, animal life, and then there's like you know insect and, and fungus life. Like mm-hmm. all that's like all yeah in one together. I I imagine just if you're just filling up your house with a little bit more of that ecosystem, it's kind of giving more of a nice like, you know what I mean? I'm pretty sure all the other animals appreciate real real plants as long as it's not toxic. Yeah, there's one plant I have out of all the plants I have that is considered technically toxic. But at least it's not like fatal. Okay. But at least it's not like it's not near the dog, is it? It's the one on on the bookshelf. But luckily, it's not like the dog goes for plants, anyways. Okay. So I mean, if she doesn't attack it, then there, then there's nothing really to worry about. Plus, you see how small she is. Yeah, she's small. She ain't going. She, nothing. Anywhere. Nothing is within her reach. It's yeah. on a shelf, on a bookshelf. Oh, okay. So like, if any leaves fell, it just would fall on the shelf or yeah. whatever. But it, it's not even considered fatal. It would only just give, like, indigestion or something. It's said like that. Oh, or whatever, okay. diarrhea. So, I mean, like, it's something, but it's not, like, anything to be scared of. But there are some plants that are, you know. You should get a plant up. that makes ricin or something. Make some deadly. You're just like, yo, I got to kill somebody. That'd be crazy. And, you know, it'd be crazy to have, like, <laughs> deadly plants and all that but like i imagine it you'd have to have extra care for it particular care there's a plant in australia that's supposed to have this type of i don't know if it's a poison or something but if you get it on you the pain is so bad suicide is actually a very common common thought Wow, there, there, there has been people who committed suicide because they had the plant afflict them. Really? Because it's something where like it's fuzzy hairs that will burrow into your skin more if you get it on you in the first place. But um, I heard that the, the the experience can last anywhere between weeks to months. Fuck. And you're just in constant, just extreme pain. You just either have to endure it for a couple of weeks to a couple of months, or it's just too much. Until it kills you, or until you get over it? I mean, there's some cases where people just straight up died with how bad it was. There's been other cases where people have just killed themselves because of how bad it was. But there has been people who get over it. But, I mean, it's just a grueling, horrible, miserable experience. That'd be so badass if you, like, would live through that shit. (laughs) Just like, ugh! For three months, and then you come out of it, and you're like, all right, I'm going to kill whoever fucking put that shit on me. <laughs> you come back stronger. Just Do you? Would you? Imagine just harnessing whatever that plant was and dumping it just on top of your enemies. Just like fucking... It's considered one of the most... Un- sprayed it, in it, their it, face. <laughs> it's considered one of the most un- 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 unbearable experiences. Really? Yeah. Dude, the nature's no joke. Nature, damn nature, you scary. I'm scared. I was scared. Nature's no joke.
nature fuck you up? <laughs> nature could, dude. Fuck. Not only that, animals can fuck you up too. Fuck you up big time. Yeah. Like a bear or something. Dude, a bear doesn't even have to try. Bear would fuck your ass up. I heard you have a better chance against like a a black bear than a grizzly bear. Something like that. I can't remember. Yeah, a black bear you can intimidate. A grizzly bear, I mean, that thing grizzly will get bear, up on two feet. And you're like, oh. Grizzly bear, you better hold your neck out so it kills you quickly. In fact, there is someone who like put up a valid. They were like saying like... You know, people like would say who would win between a gorilla or a bear. And someone was like, dude, okay, so a gorilla surprisingly has a stronger bite than a bear. Really? Yeah, like a bear has like 1,300 pounds or 1,100 pounds, while a gorilla has 13 to 1,500 pounds. So weird. So it has a stronger bite. Yeah. And it does have like those fangs and whatnot. But I mean, so does a bear. Bear has fangs for sure. But, um, the gorilla is only standing at like how much with arms extended so long a bear stands up it's fucking tall as fuck and that like they're saying like a gorilla is strong but i mean a bear is fucking strong just as well like everyone looks at a gorilla and thinks raw strength and whatnot yeah but like a bear still has hundreds of pounds of muscle on it like they're saying like a gorilla has like it's hide and whatnot but it, it's no way that it's padded to withstand a bear blow like if a bear still swiped at a gorilla it's still gonna get swiped like why don't we just say fuck it and throw them in the ring with each other i don't know people why. who have plenty of i'm time. sure there's videos on the deep web of people doing that shit plenty you just get a gorilla and you throw some fucking paper balls at it. And then for a bear, you just like, you know, fucking, you just fucking flick it in the nuts once. And then they're both ma- mad. You just pff, run out. <gasps> what I've learned interesting about gorillas is I guess apparently they won't attack anything that they can visibly understand is weaker than them. Really? They'll, they have at least, obviously if you're not going at it, yeah. Poking it with this. St- if you just ran and crossed it in the middle of the forest and you obviously yeah. went like. Oh, 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 oh. And it was like, and you can easily see like, oh, this is a weakling. All right. <laughs> I'll just leave this guy alone. <laughs> but so if you, weird. if you were to try to show off that like you're stronger or anything, then it will fuck you up or try to fuck you up, which I mean, it's not going to be a try. It's just gonna, but <laughs> if, as long as you make it obvious to that thing that you are weaker than it, it won't, you know, it won't fuck with you. I don't know, dude. I'll fuck a gorilla. Up. Yeah. I'll fuck Did you know gorilla. Mike Tyson offered $10,000 to a zookeeper to let him in to get in a fight with a gorilla? He saw a gorilla bullying another gorilla, and he asked, a, uh, he told the zookeeper, I'll give you $10,000 to let me get in there to straighten that gorilla up. And the zookeeper turned around and just promptly said, no. <laughs> He's like, I understand you can punch my head clean off <laughs> if I was just standing here with a board behind my back. But that guy would do the same. Let me teach this guy a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to go into its own enclosure. He wanted to go into its own house and tell it what's wrong and expect that he was going to come out of it. He wanted to box a gorilla. Hey, you th- <laughs> hey, hey, stop that. Hey, tough guy. <laughs> You think you can mess around with all the other gorilla around here? Why do you mess with someone your own size? <laughs> <laughs> and what if that's how he died? Jesus Christ. I would have, you know what? Tore up. I wouldn't let that So the thing through. is, people think, you know, a gorilla would just smash, right? 
And that's not, I mean, that's not intentionally, I mean, it may throw its arms at you and whatnot, but that's not its main way of fighting. I think it'll just dig its claws into you. And it will first, it's going to, it's, it's going to either flail like it's, it's, it fights like it thinks it has sledgehammers attached to it. So uh-huh. it's just going to throw its forearms really more than its hands. It's not going to like, oh yes, this is what I'll do or whatever. It's just, you know, it walks like this. It was just. Uh, uh, you know what I mean? So it's just yeah. throwing that. But its main thing is once it gets on you, right, and grabs you, it's just going to go, ah, and those big-ass fucking fangs are just going to go, fuck, how many people have died from that? Not Damn. as many from gorillas, but from chimpanzees. Oh, imagine just one. Huh? <laughs> 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 Just fucking tearing you a gri- I mean chimpanzees, they do fuck they, gems. they grab you and play with you like Play Doh. And- <laughs> I honestly think that that's why there isn't another species of like like Homo erectus anything because we're just like fuck every other race dog. Well, there's there's I've, I've clear kinda... evidence that we've interbreeded with them. That must be such a wild. You think, time you think all in. breeding is consensual? Definitely not. No, but I mean, who knows how much was? I mean, are you saying that none of it was? Absolutely not. You don't willing, think a Neanderthal? You don't bet, think a Neanderthal's tribe got messed up? Because I'm willing some to bet a majority them. of even human I'm not, on human. I'm not denying. <laughs> I'm not denying that there that that wasn't at all. But you don't think there was any? Like you don't think there was a time? Do there there was a time where three different human species were walking around all at once? Uh, Homo sapiens, Homo erectus, and Neanderthals. Like all three were present around the same time. Can you imagine, like, hey, bro, what's your type? Like, I like white chicks. You? I like black chicks. How about you? I like Neanderthals. I like Neanderthals. Huh? I don't even like humans, bro. I I like other humans. Like, <sighs> imagine if That's those... That's species, um, bro. Like, imagine, imagine if, like... Those two different types of species had a chance to live. I think longer, that's what, and there was different races of Neanderthals today, or different Homo I think, erectus I think, today. I think that could very well have just been like another chapter of racism that was erased from history. I, I definitely. That's a think, way more. I think cut and dry version. So the difference between Neanderthals I think and humans something. is that they were more on a on an isolated tribe while we can, we like to conjugate into bigger tribes because we were more about using our big brains. And what's funny is Neanderthals though, they had bigger brains than humans. I don't know how that forms intelligence and whatnot, but, um, I don't know if that means bigger intelligence. There's no, a, plenty of animals that have bigger brains than definitely us. Definitely not. But, but in the same ratio and size, I mean, they were still the, not saying that they, were like you know f- smarter than us or whatever but they did have a big brain which was something to note all other hominids of our species didn't have a brain of that much mass as theirs who knows how they would have developed in the future because uh all, all of them were around the same time as us and like what? sure we were advancing others farther than others but like can you imagine if we lived in a world where we actually like all helped out and pitched in and whatnot. I'm pretty sure we did, and that's who we are today. That's why there what is if, some Neanderthal uh, genes in some humans. It's not at all. What if? What if they were really intelligent? And because we were like, no, oh, they're fucking scary they, and shit. They're too strong. We gotta kill them, and so we just killed them, and we killed some a species. No, they say that most. Us. They say mostly the reason why they died out is because of the fact that they didn't get into big groups as much as we did. And just when times got tough, you know, you it's better to band together and be in bigger groups. But because yeah. like I'm spit this these are not facts. This is just example. Like a normal tribe would be like twelve to fourteen people, while a Neanderthal tribe is like seven to six people. Like they just didn't socialize as much. Humans' best power other than our brains is our socialization, which is yeah. uh, part our of our brain. brain. Yeah. But like um 
it, you can't beat convincing people to join your side, you know? I it's just you can't get as much done by yourself no. than with a group. No. And and a group can't and get as every much done aspect, than like business, a group. business, survival, building, whatever. Yeah. You, you need a team. But like that's so crazy to think that there is a time where there was more than one type of human being around. Mm. I imagine the choices today is still more vast because now like we have all these different races that we can intermingle with. Like I'm pretty sure there was no, there was no like Hawaiians, Polynesians. There is no Philippines. I don't know why I'm saying Islanders, but like there's no Mexicans. Like, you know what I mean? Like back then, I don't even know what race you would just Northern African, Southern Europe, and they, Western Asian. Like that's it, right? Yeah. And then there's three different subspecies of humans, and they're all of the same type of race, just different species and whatnot. Which is that's such a weird, like different type of social interaction, sh- like structure to think of. Like, obviously, those people didn't see those and like, hey, what's up? Hey, you're different. I mean, it's just like. <laughs> but there is still evidence nonetheless that we still like fucking mixed around you know mixed the pot a little bit Mm. Mm. I'd be crazy if they still existed it's like there's today Neanderthal today and Homo erectus and they had YouTube channels and they're just like they have their own rights and protests to go over and, and stuff Neanderthal They'd be offended. Prejudice. They'd be offended if you were calling them Neanderthals. Neanderthal. That's offensive. That's offensive. That's such an archaic way to be bringing up my culture. Wow. That people. is very ignorant and bigoted of you. Like, it'd be so weird to, to have different Just be, human. What do you think? How do you think sports would be like? Like next up, we have Jimmy Jones. He uh, is a uh, like a, just a Neanderthal, a Neanderthal. To, to to fucking hit grand slams, just like left and right. If they were able to have that hand eye coordination, and just like in football, <sighs> it's like all the oh, they're the Neanderthals they're, 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 are they're taller. All the D line, they're the complete defensive just line. Like just like the fat, you know, because they're stocky. They're not going to oh, be tall. Are? No, we're oh, we okay. all, you would if you were back then. Yeah, would scare them fucking shit out of oh, all yeah, of them. However, sure. if any of them ran up to you and just smacked you, they'd probably just break some whatever bone in your body because yeah, they're just like little gorillas. But like, they all, like, honestly, I think a five foot five human being would make them go like, oh my God, this person's so fucking tall. Like, what the fuck? I think they were all around like uh, four foot five to five feet at the most. Really? Yeah. Damn. Humans have, it's interesting to see the current evolution of humans today like you know people who don't believe in evolution like the i think honestly the best evidence to show these people is people looking at at people back then to now yeah we're definitely changing big time especially with just the inner racial mingling which i think is great just like with dogs like i don't think purebreds are a good option not unless you like a dog with a legit weakness like a pokemon yeah. Like, oh, this dog, like all others of its kind, has this very same hip dysplasia. Yeah. Like, every single, uh-huh. it's almost like a fucking card game. Like each dog has a specific weakness. There's like something that it's gonna. Doberman's die. brains get too sm- too big for their oh, yeah. skull. Like, Labs have respiratory issues or some shit. Yeah, like that. Like everything they- like that. But when you make a mutt, like you mix and match, like they may have that problem. They may not. They, they may be just like the, a chance the, out of They it, may yeah. have the best of all and the weakness of none. You can breed it out, can't you? Like if you yeah, don't if, have if it, you, and then you breed you with kept, someone who doesn't you, have it. If you then, kept breeding different genetic pools, then you get a more diverse. It'd be yeah. better. And like humans have been doing that themselves, and like seeing all these mixed races and stuff like that. And I think we as a species have been taller. I think we're all taller than yeah, like. Even I, me, and I'm the average height that a, a human being is, five foot nine. That's the average height of a person. And I think if I went back 100 years or 200 years, five, you know, whatever, X amount of, of decades, I'd, I'd be considered taller than the average person. The more I go, the farther I go back, the taller I am to people. And uh, 
Like, that's not even the only aspect. There are um, some people who aren't needing to get their wisdom teeth removed because that's not a constant... I mean, that's not something that they're developing. There's some people who... who Just don't develop... Don't develop that wisdom unneeded teeth. wisdom teeth. So weird. Um, there are... I mean, what else? Oh, I mean, like, I remember hearing in, like, 1950s, the average breast size for women was, like, a B cup. Today is now, like, a D cup. It's like, yeah. women are definitely... Getting bustier. Yeah. I think that's because of... Uh, Cultural... Uh, no, it's uh, it's because of birth control and, and, and chemicals and stuff. A lot of girls, hormone. a lot of girls when they're like in really young ages, they'll start taking um, birth control when they start having their, their periods and like, boom, just get boobs out of nowhere in a so couple I mean, of weeks. But yeah, I mean like now today, like we're now, we're now developing in other words from other factors, like go back a hundred, 200, 500 years. There wasn't no, I mean, maybe if they were eating certain, I mean, there's definitely a lot of home remedies from a lot of cultures that say are supposed to help with certain things because they probably contained a type of hormone yeah, or type of chemical yeah. that helped produce something by chance. But like now, today's an age, we can filter feed that on demand if we want it and whatnot or whatever. But definitely human beings are, are I'd say, you could show people like this is your proof evolution exists. Yeah. Like we're we're changing on all these different levels completely, and yeah, it's it's not like fucking overnight or whatever, but mm -hmm. it's very fast compared to comparing it to other things. Like, what do you think people would be like in the next thousand years? What's crazy is we think that life is so crazier and whatnot, and and how life is lived and it is and all that but i mean just look at paintings of people a thousand years ago they still it's not like oh my god we, there's a totally different looking person or whatnot or yeah. whatever no they just still like, have a face they still have a nose eyes fashion's ears. different fashion fashion's changes di more than the people yeah but when you see renaissance paintings of people who are damn near naked it's like that looks just it's like romanticized though not everybody looked like well that. it depends on who's the artist like yeah. if, you're, if you're talking about like I, I think it's Michelangelo or one of the other guys. Like they Someone. drew women way too manly because mm. they the rumor had it that they were a virgin, died a virgin, never really seemed yeah. but like there are some paintings where it, I mean, it depends on, again, on the artist, but when you see some artists who drew like anatomically perfect, like constructions of people, it's like that still looks like a person that would be here today. Yeah. It's not like, people today the one thing that makes us really look different from people back then i think is just the cultural diversity yeah like imagine a person with really dark skin but blue eyes like uh -huh. that that imagine back then to them is like an anomaly yeah or someone who has uh you know european features but has like a western like complexion and stuff like that like that's you know I'm pretty sure, like, everyone more the same looked the same, more or less looked the same yeah. back then than today. And so I wonder, like, in a thousand years, I imagine we still would look the same. But as I said earlier, there is, like, we are now being able to directly affect how we develop ourselves. So, yeah. I think a thousand years we're going to look more different than we did a thousand years ago just because of technology. I feel like technology will help out some way. You don't think in the next couple hundred years. Would you years, say that's encouraged or is that like a, a that's kind of inedible feeling that's, that's, that's something to be. feel, I don't know about excited or off. But I think just like genetic, we're talking about genetic manipulation, right? Well, okay, I think just that with that whole concept, that's only to be for a select group. It's still, like, it's. I don't think, like... It's a future controversy. Yeah. You see and, it. and, I mean... Uh, and it's going to be politicized like crazy. Oh, for sure. Oh, God, if, yeah. If we think vaccines and to cold remedies is, is already heavily politicized right now, yeah. I imagine that's only the tip of the iceberg compared to, like... 
oh yeah, we can make people stronger than ever. And it's like, okay, what about the people who aren't? You know what I mean? Like that, it, it would open a can of worms yeah. so big that you and I would never be able to fucking in our lifetimes discuss in a, in a manner that would help figure out a I better see, answer. I definitely see a new rule where it's like, you didn't consent to <laughs> to live, so now you, now now you're owed money. Uh, it's it <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's crazy. It's crazy to think of of <laughs> the future. Yeah, what people look like. I bet you. I bet you we still be fighting over dumb fucking shit. I don't Pretty see. Sure. I don't see how social media like leaves though. I think social media is gonna stay forever. Wireless communication is always going to stay. Yeah, yeah. This is a we lived in a pretty pronounced zeitgeist moment where everyone realized that we can all not just be a fucking a blimp in the middle of nowhere. Like back then, right? Living inside the castle or the farms or in, in the fucking huts and stuff, you had an opinion. And you, you like, it was your opinion, but I imagine that it was like, I need to go out there and spread it or whatever or anything like that. Like, I imagine people were still opinionated, but not like determined to, oh, I mean, they, they still couldn't. killed you. They still killed you over it and whatnot. But it's not like this movie sucked. <laughs> like, I imagine they were opinionated only for a few things. We're we could be opinionated about anything now. I don't yeah. like how this company makes this product. Yeah, because it uses this material and it's bad for the environment. Like that's like a top. That's type I think of type everything. Of, I think everything's gonna have its own like hater. Oh, it definitely. I think that's always been and whatnot, but like. Back then, you'd probably be like, "Man, this sucks," and that's it. And you just went back to your day. But like now, yeah. you can like you can kind of hyper focus. Now you for, can now for you the can, next five to ten minutes. Now you can try writing to f- it. Convince people, yeah, that they should be thinking the same way as you. Yeah. So like it. Uh, that's fuck. I I feel like social media. It's such a double-edged sword. It's so good, and it's so Dude, bad. I'm kind of like, I was just thinking about it yesterday at work. I was like, you know, what if I just deleted everything and gave up and just <laughs> stopped fucking with social media? So I went through this moment where I, uh, because what sucks is like, okay, to me, social media is that like contact step for someone that like you're cool with, but not enough to like, I want to give you my phone number. Yeah. It's like, hey, man, you're all right. Uh, why don't you just hit me up on Facebook one of these days or something like that? Yeah, IG, whatever. So, like, I've never deleted my account, uh-huh. but I have one time deleted them off of my phone. Yeah. And I've just, I've never, I probably, like, once every one or two years, I'll go on it while I'm actually on my computer. Uh-huh. I never really, because, you know, I have a gaming computer. I really just use it to game or something or whatever. Yeah. But anyways, I... I took that off of my phone and it definitely did improve the way. And and it wasn't just because me in particular, I'm not someone who is really, really invested in, um, well, you know me, I don't post. So I don't have that problem of looking for, for, um, notifications of people viewing my stuff or anything like that. Mm -hmm. That's a real problem for a lot of people who post post frequently they, they'll have a condition where they, they, you know, not that they get mad or whatever, that they don't get any notifications or whatever, but their brain is like, ah, oh, there you go. Yes. Ten likes. We made it, buddy. Yeah, dude, like, I, I, that happens to me too, but, like, I kind of see it as like, oh, this post got this many likes. Sweet. It's doing well. 
Yeah. So like, I mean, so like I was saying, like, but like, it, but like, dude, think about anything, anything. Like, oh, if you made flower pens and you were selling them, like, oh yeah, I sold another so one. It's, oh, it's one, it's one thing just to to look forward for gratification and get notification and whatnot. Yeah. But it's another to know that you're you're waiting for it on demand. Like when you when you make your work, you're gonna go present it. On social media, you're just throwing it out there, waiting for people to catch it. Yeah. So, like, like it's way more artificial. It's not this. I really wouldn't consider it the same. Other people would argue because that's what majority so of their the other, form of interaction well, is. The other side of it too is like, it's sometimes it's nice to see you know like a bunch of people commenting on your post that have you know you build. It's like it's a community. You know, people have. Like, I post very joke-like content. So when people comment on my stuff, they're not saying, you know, inspirational shit or, like, you know, it's it's jokes, you know? So it's nice that, like, when I post a joke and then people, like, comment a joke under it, it's like, yeah, I have my community of people yeah. that are just, like, throwing out, like, funny shit. And, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just that it's impossible to filter feed your social media to only have those pleasantries without the entire plethora I, so, avalanche of the poison and toxicity some, that it also comes with it. Sometimes and, I wish that there was a thing that I could like turn on and off. So it's like, okay, people in my hometown, local hometown stuff, turn that on. Uh, business friends, turn that off. I'm t I don't want to, so I want to break from the business. You, friends. you can, you can customize your feeds on some of these social media. You platforms. can, but it's not as it, I've, it, I have spent hours, on on you know throughout the years of, yeah, yeah. of like going on and feel and you know finding a way to refine it and I have improved it vastly from what it was before but even then the thing is just like social media also brings a type of behavior out of people that you just only see on, on social, social media, media. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and after a while there's a lot of people that you are genuinely friends with and you enjoy that you're just like I don't want to actually see their you know I'll hide them off, off of my uh, off of my news feed. Like you're yeah. still my friend, but every time you post a status, I'm not seeing it because yeah. some stupid shit I don't care about. I deleted whatever. a bunch of people because I'm just like I don't really give a fuck about your opinion. If you post your opinion way too much, yeah, it's it's one thing to to voice something if it really means something to you, and like, you know, like. Oh, this something means really, really near and dear to me. Yeah. I've been passionate about this for years, and now this is challenging it, or this is helping it. Like, please look into this, or whatever. But it's I'll another to that. just be like every single every post, single day is like it, a fucking it's a it's like a fucking fight for justice. Yeah, then I that, hate that shit. Then that's just yeah, it's excessive and it's too much. And so like yeah, like that yeah. or it's like calling out something or like that it's like or it's like ridiculing somebody for having a certain idea that's typically political or like some sort of like money motivation or something like that. And it's just like, dude, shut the fuck up. I'm just tired and of so, it. And that's a problem too. So I had that mentality for a long while. Shut up no one gives a fuck and then after a while i started realizing that i've been saying shut up no one gives a shit about your opinion for a while for so long that if i was to look at my own self no one that gives a person fuck. would be like, bro just shit just shut up shut no the one fuck cares up. that you no don't care <laughs> yeah i know so once i kind of had that realization it was like oh then the best option is just to pull out entirely like obviously yeah. you have more of a reason to keep your stand in still with it mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that is just the way how people should manage it is is probably what would help them out. And what I mean by that is like, well, first off, I think the number one thing that people should do is turn off their notifications entirely. Yes. yes. Entirely. Absolutely shut. First even off, the, even if the badge like, icons too. When, oh well, I don't. You're are you an Android user? You're an uh -huh. It's the little red number that appears over the the app. You can oh turn yeah, that, yeah, you can yeah. Turn yeah. That off mm -hmm. too. Yeah, I have. I my my phone doesn't show me any notifications from Facebook. Not at all. None of mine. And like, you really shouldn't have anything important come through that 
platform anyways like sometimes i get messages through instagram and i don't realize it until it's too late but yeah um, and it's and it's like that that's that why should i be say a minor like text me on my phone dude like here's yeah. my phone number text me on my phone it, i do it, not get notifications it should be a minor inconvenience compared to the mental health it could really give to you if you're one of those people who are really dependent on social media like there's a quite a few people i know who they i probably wouldn't even say themselves are aware of how dependent Oh, yeah. That they are on social media. Sometimes I am. I go through phases. So all my social media apps are on the last page of my home screen. Mm. Very last page. Mm. And I think it's just, it's easier that way because then I have to open it up, slide over a couple of times, and then look for the app that I'm looking for mm. rather than just like popping it open and it's See, the front page. Mine's similar. Mine, it's not on my home screen. So it doesn't matter how many you flip. I actually have to go and open my apps and then go through my app folder to find uh, it. So so it's, oh, okay. it's the same concept, but a little bit more work. Yeah. Which to me is even better because then that just means I have to like fish for it more. And it's funny how like it's not like we hit it in some cryptic folder. Yeah. It just only it takes two seconds to get there. But it because it doesn't take me half a second, I'm just not going to do it. It's so funny how just that little. It's the little extra thing step. You pop there well, for because yourself. it's not it's it's it's. You, it, it's still a habit that you can break. You can definitely you, be like, you, I don't give could. a fuck. Slide, 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 tap, tap, slide, slide. All right, now I'm in. You could. And you can turn that into a thing. I guess it's just because I naturally am not that dependent on it. It's not that much of an issue for it, me. It helps you remember, like, there's a reason why I put more steps in between this and logging in. I wish I, wish I could put, like, a numeric code at the start of, mm. of, of my apps. Have it not remember your password. That's that's a little too inconvenient. <laughs> that's a little too inconvenient for me, dog. I don't know about that. Four characters, but eight. That's just not that's just I'm too talking much. just like a one 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 or something like that. I don't want to because all my social media passwords are different. They have they have a assortment of like numbers and and characters after it, each one. So one's like this 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 with this at the end and then the other one's like a slight variation of that mm. and like sometimes i get them wrong so i i would rather just have like a numeric code it's not even to keep people out of it or anything like that it's just because i don't have a lock on my phone because there's a lot of times where i need to pull out my phone just to unlock it and go to like spotify real quick and change a song or like you know select something real quick i hate I hate phone passwords. Mm, it mm. slows me down way too much. But yeah, dude, I hate I I did you ever see Social Dilemma? No. Oh fuck, dude. It's a rough it's a rough watch. Yeah. Yeah, you it's violating. You feel violated like after watching this movie. Like just with how because like you got to you got to think at the end of the day and this is something that we need to always tell people. This is, I think this is the, the next like look both ways before crossing the street type shit. Like if it's free online, then it is not the product. You are the product. Your information, your attention, that's the product that's being purchased by advertisers. Mm -hmm. So that's the product. Like, we are not a consumer. We are a product to these companies. The consumer is the um, is the advertisers that pay them to to put these advertisements in front of the the people's faces. So because you know, and a lot of people get confused because since we're common people, we're just common people. We have nothing to do with Facebook. So like, oh, we you know, we post on Facebook, we make this content, we make things interesting, we talk about stuff and we, you know, and in the meantime they throw up these ads like, you know, here's Pepsi, here's fucking here's fucking shave my balls, whatever the company <laughs> <laughs> but like you know they so you know at the end of the day like we're even though we're common people we're not a consumer of any of this i mean we're a consumer to to other people's content like you know i have my consumers that watch my content but overall you know where the money is where the money's at right now we're just products 
to the internet. And I think I think if I think, if kids, I, I think a lot of people don't realize that that you're that even that, before the internet. And like, that's what I well, like that's what I like. I I, te- I try to teach my sister this, where it's like you know Instagram and Facebook. That like they're not just like companies that people are managing because. Instagram's really fun. I mean, it's fun to go on the app. It must be fun to code. It must be fun to go to the meetings and make Instagram Instagram. And like, it's not like that. Like, there's a bunch of people that sit down in a room and they're like, how can we get more people to waste more time on this app so we can show more ads? What can we do? Well, what if... What if we got them to slide everything? What if, instead of instead of clicking on something and opening it up? Oh, that person's status is very interesting. All right, put it back. All right, oh, let's check out what this person's doing. Obviously, that's social media. You know, if we like, if if it was like in a way where like we popped open something and there was just a bunch of like de- it was a desktop full of folders you're like oh let's check and see what guy's doing oh wow this is cool all right let me go see what this person's doing but like you know it's just like there's a math problem that just like oh dude i think this person this person would definitely dig this if they like this person's status they've been they've been watching a lot of car shit and this person just posted a photo of a wrench Mm. You know, like fucking th- and like the algorithm, the algorithm works so fucking and it's fucking going and it's just throwing shit up and like and we're just like scrolling and the algorithms are working so fast and it predicts us and shit like that. And like and then the, our information is tied to it, too. So like just say if you went on Amazon and you purchased fucking you purchased a guitar and then you go back on Facebook and it's like, yo, dude, you looking at guitars? You looking at guitar strings? That's the cookies. You want, you that's the some, cookies in your computer. You want some of this? That's you want... why you delete your cookies. Yeah. That's when when your browser's sharing the information over the, over different platforms. Is when you're in, That's what cookies are. That's what cookies are. Okay, mm-hmm. I didn't know that. But... That's, yeah, dude. that's when, you're, when your entire you gotta, system itself is like realizing, okay, this guy looks you, up. You got to watch the social dilemma. I talked about it on the podcast a bunch, but I haven't talked about it in a while. So, mm. but it, it it's it's very eye opening. It's it's like you know, I watched it and I was like, wow, dude, I got finessed. My free time, like my my peace of mind, just got finessed out of me out of these like corporations that think that they're running up on me. And that's why it's like so hard now to create content because the more you create content and the more you're in the YouTube space, the music space, the, the Instagram space, you know, you're doing photography, you're doing graphic design, you're doing video, all of this shit. And then you're like, dude, like they just want us to turn out. Like I turn out so much content. Like, what was it? I just posted the other day. I got four, you know, I I kept, people's attention on my YouTube channel for almost 500 hours, 500 hours of human life has done nothing else but sit down in front of the computer or in front of their phone to watch me say something. And I haven't received anything for it. And not only that, but I, you know, of course I've put in, a lot of time into it too, you know, a couple hours per video. I mean, a podcast in post and pre and post takes about two hours plus the time it takes to shoot, which we're at two hours right now. Damn. Right when you said that, a light went out. Damn. The is video's gonna signal? look the video's gonna look a little bit shittier. You know what it is? The battery just went out. I never hold on one sec. The battery went out. I never switched it to the power supply, so that's why it went out. Two hours and 23 minutes. Yeah, well, we hit the record button, and we were fucking got up and left for a bit. So oh. who knows well, that's still, I imagine it's still over two hours, though. It's still over two hours, yeah. But how long are you trying to go? Oh, <laughs> 
Dude, that was a hella good fucking bass boost. I can I'm gonna do it again. I you gotta do it lower. It's peaking like fucking crazy on here. Well, I think we should wrap wrap it. I think so. Tab it. Cap it. Ship it. Bop it. Twist it. Fuck it. Pass it. Smoke it. Woo tang it. Fuck it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. Another one for the books. Another Let's one. do it.